Released by Square Enix in 2019 on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, Kingdom Hearts 3 would be a direct sequel to 0.2 Birth by Sleep A Fragmentary Passage. Written and directed by Tetsuya Nomura, the game would be a culmination of the previous nine Kingdom Hearts games before it wraps up the Dark Seeker saga featuring Xehanort. For story, the game features Sora, Donald, and Goofy as they make the final preparations for the imminent Keyblade War. For gameplay, the game involves a command menu system of Kingdom Hearts 2 with features from other games such as shot lock, wall running, and flow motion. New tools include being able to wield three Keyblades and swap between them on the fly, form changing including changing the Keyblade into a variety of different weapons, and new attraction summons alongside normal Link summons. Allies in different worlds now simply join up to a five-man party, meals can be cooked for stat boosts, and Keyblades may now be upgraded via crafting. In addition, the gummy ship is now a 3D explorable space, photos may be taken, and extra DLC for battles and story have been added, included here. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, we see a world named Scala Ad Kylum, wherein a young Xehanort and Ericus are playing a board game against each other, as Xehanort brings up the story of the ancient Keyblade War. He mentions the Keyblade Masters, who started the Keyblade War, called the Lost Masters, wondering if perhaps the war was started for them. Ericus claims to have never heard of them to a skeptical Xehanort, who adds the future has already been written, glancing towards a particular Keyblade hanging on the wall. Ericus doubts that, mentioning he feels there is more to light than meets the eye, feeling the light stands a chance of winning, and Xehanort welcomes the idea. Many years later in the Keyblade Graveyard, the Master of Masters meets with a young Xehanort, showing off black robes that can ward off darkness. Having used it to travel quickly around the world, Xehanort found too many cases of corrupt, cowardly, and self-righteous people living peaceful, entitled lives while growing and spreading darkness in their hearts. Left alone, the world would fall to chaos, and though he's not sure what, he intends to do something about it. The Master agrees letting false light rule the world is wrong and advises he act on his decision, pointing out it won't be long before Xehanort will grow so powerful he'll be controlling the darkness instead. Xehanort wonders where all these prophecies are coming from and who the Master really is, and seeing no harm the Master tells him his name while adding he's a lost Master. 75 years pass as Xehanort speaks to Zigbar and Saix about the Master he talked to at this same spot, thinking about how right he was. Focusing, they discuss the building of the real Organization 13 roster and their missions, as Marluxia and Larxene are off finding the new Seven Hearts, and Luxert is searching for something per Zigbar's order without revealing why. In addition, the hearts of Heartless Ansem, Xemnas, Vanitas, Riku Replica, and Young Xehanort can be transferred from the past into replicas today. For the last two they need, Xehanort offers Dark Terror from the time when he transferred his heart into him, and Saix suggests the number I replica Vexen once made. Not only does it have a direct connection to Sora, though it was erased from everyone's memory, it remains as data in Vexen's records, so they will need Vexen too. Back to the present time, Aqua sits on the beach in the Realm of Darkness, accompanied by Ansem the Wise, who says this beach is connected to the Destiny Islands, and Aqua is optimistically waiting to be rescued. They are soon visited by Heartless Ansem, who asks his former mentor about a particular little girl who lost her memories back when Ansem the Wise was performing experiments on the heart. Demanding to know where this girl is now, Ansem the Wise refuses to talk, and Aqua pushes back Heartless Ansem, though without a Keyblade she makes little progress against his power and guardian. Ansem the Wise surrenders to spare Aqua, but Ansem still blasts her with a direct hit of darkness, knocking her into the deep, dark waters where she sinks while darkness energy consumes her. Elsewhere, Master Yen Sid informs Sora how there are a few Keyblade wielders still slumbering and whom Sora must wake with the power of waking. Yen Sid reminds Sora that in addition to failing to gain that power during his Mark of Mastery exam, he was almost lost to darkness, made into a vessel, and was stripped of nearly all his power. For now, recovering his strength is the first priority, and recommends him to visit someone he knows who has had to endure a similar trial, Hercules. Embarking, Sora opens a gate to Olympus Colosseum, where at the same time, Hades has begun to enact a long-time plan to take over Olympus by unleashing powerful titans. Landing in Thebes, Sora finds the city in ruins and Hercules working to save the situation. Sora takes the time to ask Hercules how he got his strength back when he lost it, but Hercules isn't so sure himself beyond a strong feeling in his heart. In the meanwhile, Heartless continue to ravage the city and after teaming up, they encounter Maleficent who mocks Sora for how weak he's become while continuing their search for a black box. The liberation of Thebes continues, until they are now visited by Zigbar who states that their ideology of a hero is fundamentally flawed and a system built on self-sacrifice is doomed to fail. As they notice foreboding clouds gather around Mount Olympus, Hercules moves ahead as Sora finds he must contend with the fearsome Earth Titan hurling boulders from the cliffside. Summoning up a new power, Sora calls in the Big Thunder Mountain Coaster, riding the train attraction across the sky and toppling a titan with pyrotechnics. 
Catching up in time to save the day with Hercules, Hercules recalls he never really answered Sora's question, and Sora replies he already did, by finding something to fight for with all of his heart. Nearby, Maleficent and Pete leave after a fruitless search for the box, and Zigbar observes when he is visited by Luxord, who questions why the box they seek is so important if its contents are allegedly unknown, and deduces it was Zigbar who ordered the search. Corner, Zigbar claims he doesn't know the contents either, but Luxor doesn't buy his ignorance so easily, suspecting Zigbar seeks it only to keep secret his connection to the box in the first place. He presses harder, questioning who Zigbar is really, and Zigbar flinches. Seeing this, Luxor is content to know he is right and doesn't actually care, agreeing to feign ignorance too, and Zigbar says the better question is who Luxor really is. Elsewhere, in the Realm of Darkness, King Mickey and Riku seek out Aqua as Mickey notes his ability to sense Aqua diminishing, arriving at a familiar beach. He can no longer follow her trail and states she has fallen into an even deeper abyss they cannot currently dive into. Suddenly, they find themselves surrounded by seemingly normal Heartless that quickly converge into a powerful towering legion. Fending off the powerful threat, Riku soon finds himself swallowed whole and drowning in the Sea of Darkness, as the old but familiar voice of Riku Replica from Castle Oblivion spots him and saves Riku as he passes out. Waking up safely, Riku sees Mickey as dispersed the Heartless for now, but shows him his Keyblade was snapped in half in the process, suggesting they regroup at Yen Sid's tower to rearm and better prepare. Back at the tower, Sora's reminded again how he needs to gain the power of waking, as Mickey and Riku come in also empty-handed. Riku recalls that when Sora sank into the abyss, he was able to dive in and save him, so perhaps someone close to Aqua can do the same, though Mickey mentions Ventus is hidden and Terra is missing. Yensid then suggests Mickey and Riku retrace Aqua's steps in worlds she visited in order to find others who may be connected to her. Mickey mentions how damaged their Keyblades are, and Yensid tells them to visit the wizard Merlin, who is training both Kairi and Lee, while also delivering new plaid-themed gear to them as extra protection from the darkness. Turning to Sora, he says the fairies have also crafted him a new outfit in the same manner, and Chip and Dale have gifted him a new device. Jiminy Cricket opts to come along and chronicle the journey again, and Yen Sid personally gifts Sora with a trinket called a Heartbinder that allows Sora to manifest the many bonds he holds into power. As they go their separate ways, Sora is contacted on his new gummy phone from Chip and Dale, and then Ienzo, who says they are still working on decrypting Ansem's hidden code found within Sora. He also confirms what Sora already suspected, insomuch that his heart does not belong to just himself, but also Roxas. Deciding now, Sora declares that while everyone else is seeking Aqua, he'll find and save Roxas, and his journey now begins in earnest. Voyaging across the ocean between worlds, the crew makes a stop at Twilight Town where Roxas was predominantly, and as they walk, Goofy reminds them about the black box Pete and Maleficent are looking for, and how he senses it may be important. He also observes Sora's homesick feelings may be Roxas's feelings bleeding through him, and Sora reveals he ran into Roxas in the Sleeping Worlds, and feels this means they must be on the right track. Responding to his strong feelings, several nobodies appear, asking Sora if he seeks their liege, and Sora fights back with his own army including Dream Eaters. Soon after, they see locals Hainer, Pence, and Olette being chased by a massive wave of Heartless, and Sora hurries to stem the Demon Tide and fend it off for now. Greeting the kids, Roxas' feelings speak through Sora again, as Sora explains they're looking for Roxas, and while they reply they don't know Roxas, they feel the name seems very familiar. Goofy explains Roxas was friends with another version of them in another version of Twilight Town, and the group decides to help Sora find Roxas too, suggesting they check out the old mansion first. Along the way, they rescue Remy the Rat from Heartless, who thanks Sora by showing him how to find good spots for ingredients. Within the mansion, they find Ansem's computer and with help from Ienzo, connect both terminals, giving him access to Ansem's data which will help with the decryption and possibly find full data of Roxas. He then adds that Evan, Vexen's original person, has vanished despite being unconscious after his recompletion and suspects he may have rejoined the organization, warning Sora to watch out. As they leave, Heartless Ansem is there to mock their attempt to restore Roxas, and Xemnas adds even if Roxas' heart could be separated from Sora's, it would have nowhere to go, though Goofy counters that Ansem and Xemnas used to be part of the same heart and clearly can exist separately just fine, so clearly there must be a way. Xemnas agrees and departs, and returning to town they run into Scrooge McDuck who is opening his new bistro and introducing Remy as his head chef, providing stat-boosting meals for the team. Zigbar tells the other two organization members they are making their guidance too obvious, though Ansem replies that with Sora they kind of have to spell it out. Zigbar agrees, but still warns them not to underestimate him regardless. At the same time, Kyrie and Lee take a break from training within Merlin's pocket dimension, where they form a friendship and Lee finds that Kyrie reminds him of someone important in his past but cannot recall who. Mickey and Riku also arrive at Radiant Garden where they visit the spot Aqua was last seen diving into darkness to save Terra. 
Riku asks what happened to Terra, and Mickey replies he was saved but they didn't notice, elaborating that the reason Ansem and Xemnas are youthful despite Xehanort being old is because they are split from a younger body Xehanort was possessing at the time, Terra's body. As the group embarks for the next world, we see a trailer for an exciting upcoming video game, Verum Rex, being watched by Rex the Dinosaur and the inhabitants of the world of Toy Story. Woody and Buzz observe some unfriendly Heartless appear, as Sora and the group emerge with toy forms to protect the world order. After clearing them out, Rex believes Sora is Yazora, the main character of Verum Rex, and Woody is fine with welcoming them. The toys add something strange is going on, as several of their friends are missing, Buzz's laser is a real laser for some reason, and the Heartless arrived with a figure in a black hood. Teaming up to help resolve each other's problems, they head to a toy store in town where Sora recognizes a young Xehanort is behind it all. Attacking the group with toys possessed by darkness of his own, he explains the organization is trying to find a missing darkness and created a copy of this world to experiment with tearing apart the unique connection of hearts relating the toys to empty vessels. Sora falls into the nearby Titan toy to fight his way through the various collectibles and models in the store, while also observing a display from Final Fantasy to Cydia and T. While in the video game section, they see more of Yazora, while Buzz is possessed by darkness and Goofy protects Woody from a sneak attack as young Xehanor grabs Sora and flings him into a playable demo of Verum Rex, Beat of Lead. By the time he gets out, Buzz has been taken away, and so they hurry to rescue their friend, scaling a giant cactuar in order to catch up. Young Xehanor proclaims Buzz proves their idea that a heart forcibly separated will fall into the darkness of loneliness, but Sora counters distance is not a factor for the connection of hearts. Woody agrees, bolstered by the power of his bonds, and rejects Xehanort's darkness with every step while accusing the young man of never understanding hearts and love himself. Sora and Groot fend off young Xehanort while Woody rescues Buzz from the darkness, repeating a hollow Xehanort can never understand their friendship. However, Xehanort shoots back they now know they can infuse a heart into a vessel of their choosing, covering his escape with a menacing heartless that they all work together to take down. As they say goodbye to the new friends, Sora reflects that Roxas is trapped in his heart until they can find a vessel for him. As he calls Mickey and Riku, he poses that dilemma to them, and Riku replies that replicas may be a solution for them, as it has been for the organization in the past. Recounting the events of Chain of Memories, he informs Sora replicas take the form of the heart inside it, and Mickey says Yenzo would be the perfect person to work on this. The group then shares how Maleficent is seeking a black box, and Mickey warns him of organization movement, telling him not to worry about Roxas and Naminé for now, and to keep traveling while keeping an eye out for Terra. Now visiting the Kingdom of Corona, Sora experiences the events of Tangled, while encountering Marluxia again though they don't remember him. Marluxia explains Rapunzel is a princess of heart, and her light must be protected, insisting the organization seeks balance, and darkness must complete, not compete with the light. Sora doesn't immediately reject this idea, and after some dancing at a festival and helping Rapunzel with her plight, the group sets off. At the same time, Mickey learns from Yenzo that Evan's research on replicas was incomplete and suspects he was actually taken by the organization this time for the same reason. Speaking of, Vexen has returned to the true Organization 13, stating he values completion of his replica research more than his humanity. Once perfected, his replicas need only a heart in order to be as real as any human as he is tasked to deliver the final vessel. Back with Sora, the team arrives in Monstropolis, shocked at the New World Order monster forms. Entering Monsters Inc. after the events of the first movie, they find CEO Sully alongside his friend Mike, playing with a little girl nicknamed Boo, who have reformed the company into being fueled by the laughter of children instead of their screams. Seeing the monsters mean well, Sora introduces himself, but they are quickly set upon by an enemy they don't personally recognize called the Unversed. Sully and Mike aid them in protecting Boo, and Goofy recalls Mickey once fought the Unversed, fueled by negative emotions, alongside Aqua, Terra, and Ventus. Opting to return Boo home safely, Sora joins, wanting to help while also investigating the Unversed. They arrive to see Boo's door somehow being sent away when they need it, and thinking quickly, Mike prepares some doors for them to follow back into the vault, not seeing an old rival watching them nearby. Sora now runs interference against the Heartless that now stand in their way, grinding on the rails and teaming up to scare their way through while also using Boo's laugh to power shortcuts throughout the facility. The old scarer Randall returns, tricking the group into a corner and explaining he got help from a stranger to get back to this world, seeking to also exploit negative emotions again. Goofy and Donald suspect Randall's being aided by Organization 13 as Unverse begin to set fire to the building. Mike and Sully decide to go old school to protect Boo in their new way of life, destroying Randall's scream-empowered Unverse and banishing him once again. Sora seals the way back and with Boo's door safely in hand they prepare to finally send her back. However, waiting for them is an organization member who calls out Sora as his brother, saying this is the first time they have met in person and introducing himself as Vanitas. 
He found this world was rich in harvested negative emotion and used Randall to further his own goal of reconstructing his heart. Sora finds himself defying Vanitas with the voice of Ventus, which surprises Vanitas too, who reminds Sora how he and Ventus joined hearts when Sora was little. Smothering Sora with oppressive darkness, Goofy and Donald hold back Vanitas' power, explaining to Sora how Ventus and Vanitas dueled and struck each other down, though Ventus' heart never returned to his body. As Vanitas blows them back and encroaches upon Ventus within Sora, Sully quickly sneaks behind him, stuns him with a scare strong enough to make him drop his Keyblade, and Mike arranges to have him hurled into a random door to evict Vanitas from their world. On their way again, Yenzo contacts them with an update, saying he looked into Ansem the Wise's research and discovered a passage mentioning there are three unique hearts within Sora, all dormant, though Sora retains the memories of all three locked in a sort of mental box. Ansem theorizes the hearts can be awoken if they are returned to the correct box of memories. By uniting the heart with its memories and then placed in an appropriate body, all three can be fully restored. Sora knows Roxas is one heart, and Goofy suspects Ventus is another, though Sora is unsure who the third could be. Sora then gets another call, telling him Merlin is looking for him to help with a particular book. Finding him in Twilight Town, Merlin shows him the book of Winnie the Pooh, highlighting how Sora has disappeared from its cover. Investigating on his own, Sora sees his old friends have not forgotten him, but do need some help with some bubble shooting minigames. Sora reminds him he's never gone when he's remembered in his heart, thus restoring the book to how it should be. Outside, he wonders what happened to him to make him vanish from Pooh's heart, but Merlin reminds him what's lost can be found again, even if it means taking a different approach. Traveling again, Sora finds himself nexting the Kingdom of Arendelle, as the tropical native isn't a fan of the freezing temperatures. They spot a distraught Elsa and offer to help, but are interrupted by organization member Larxene, who reintroduces herself to Sora, who also lost his memories of her. She says she's not here to hurt Elsa, but Sora isn't welcome regardless, using her power to trap Sora in a labyrinth of ice. Escaping, they decide to search for Elsa, climbing the mountain, and confused to somehow hear Elsa singing over the raging storm. Following the self-empowering lyrics, they watch her musical number, image makeover, and castle construction in awe, though are interrupted again by Larxene. She reveals Elsa is potentially one of the new seven princesses of heart, and is just there to observe and verify, though sends the group tumbling down the mountain again. As an avalanche containing Heartless threatens to bury them, Goofy quickly surfs them down the mountain to safety, where they run into Elsa's sister Anna. She catches Sora up on the backstory of Frozen, along with another musical number, and Sora relates their complicated sibling relationship to his friendship with Riku. Teaming up with her and Elsa's Ice Golem, they move to prevent Elsa from falling to darkness, defeating and dispelling the giant Heartless that lurks among them. As the power of love and family fills both of Elsa and Anna's hearts, both become Princesses of Light, much to everyone's surprise. Elsewhere, Larxene speaks with Marlisha, wondering why Xehanort allowed them back in despite their betrayal earlier, and Marlisha acknowledges they are just vessels for his essence, same as before. Larxene suggests they form another coup again, but this idea is mocked by Demix, who says they should play it smart instead like him, though he has been benched from many missions. They discuss how Vexen's new and improved replicas are far superior to the prototypes used in Castle Oblivion, though they aren't ready yet. Xemnas and Luxard now arrive, as Xemnas now says all four of them are going to reveal a secret ancient Keyblade legacy slumbering within each of them. Back with Sora, he finds himself back in the world of the Pirates of the Caribbean during the events of the third movie at World's End. Will Turner tries to catch Sora up on the events of Dead Man's Chest, and Goofy tries to simplify it as well, but Sora isn't sure he follows all of the plot threads so far. Assisting Jack in his endeavors, Jack teaches Sora how to navigate the Black Pearl, as well as how to fight the Heartless fleet in naval combat. In order to escape his debt to Davy Jones, Jack needs Jones' heart locked away in a particular box, while Vexen is intrigued by Davy Jones existing separately from his heart and so wishes to study this. Luxon reminds them of their orders to just retrieve the box and asks Vexen if he's concerned how his research is being used, and the scientist replies he's really not so long as it is completed. Back with Sora, they make it back to the world of the living, though are immediately attacked by a mob of flying heartless. Sora takes the skirmish to the air, defeating a giant Heartless, but gets separated from the others and stranded on a deserted island with Jack while hearing a voice asking to be freed in exchange for power. Exploring the island and examining some awfully suspicious treasure, Sora and crew are amazed to find an intact and seaworthy vessel in a cave somehow. Stranger still, Jack is somehow already there too, claiming the ship for himself but willing to allow Sora to helm it. Instructing him to find the way forward by following his heart's command, Sora believes, and the path forward clears on its own as the group sets sail once again on their new vessel, the Leviathan. Able to hold its own in a fight, the Leviathan boasts an impressive and magical arsenal suited to its crew, and this is all put to the test as Luxor challenges Sora to a duel on the seas. 
Luxord loses, but tricks Jack into revealing Davy Jones's chest while getting away. The Leviathan is in need of repairs before it can give chase, and Jack says collecting white crabs will suffice. Searching undersea and among Port Royal, they repair the Leviathan, and Jack names Sora its new captain. Revealing he was always just a surrogate replica of Jack to help them on behalf of the Goddess of the Sea, he reveals where the real Jack is and dissolves into a pile of crabs. Hurrying to help Jack, Sora spots Luxor trying to swipe the box in the middle of a climactic fight, mentioning the box they seek allegedly contains hope, but wilts before the strength of Jack's foul breath. However, when it's revealed Davy Jones's literal heart is all that's in the box, Vexen loses interest and sees this isn't the box they're really looking for. Sora fends off the Kraken with a ship of his own, and as events play out, the pirates win the day, the Leviathan was shown to have been a gift from the Goddess of the Sea this whole time as well. Back with Kairi, she sports a new look with a haircut and the new garments from Yen Sid. Their training nearly complete, Kairi notes Naminé is inside her heart too, and if they can free Roxas, that gives hope to freeing her as well. Reflecting, Lee then tells the story of how he befriended Ventus, and then later as Axel befriended the identical-looking Roxas, and wonders if Ventus still remembers him. Meanwhile, Riku and Mickey resume their search, armed with stronger Keyblades, and Heartless Ansem takes Ansem the Wise to the Twilight Town Old Mansion to his old lab. The two are spotted by Hainer, Pence, and Olette, who overhear Ansem mention Roxas as the Heartless wishes to access his data, and more specifically, the missing girl's memories. To save Ansem the Wise, they attempt to distract and attack Heartless Ansem, though the Guardian easily catches and tosses Hainer. Surprisingly, common nobodies surround and protect him from harm, allowing them to all escape safely. Vexen now steps out to greet them, revealing it was him behind the nobodies, and claims he planted himself inside the organization, waiting for a chance to find Ansem the Wise, and wishes to atone. Back with Sora, the group finds themselves in San Francisco after the events of Big Hero 6, where they encounter the team of student heroes defending their city from the Heartless and now begin to attack it. As they study Sora, his flow motion, and his refined new talent of transforming his weapons to adapt to the situation, they quickly improve their own tech in time for another wave of Heartless attacking the city. Their teamwork prevailing, the friends celebrate with some ice cream atop a bridge with a view of the sunset, which triggers a memory of Roxas within Sora. Later that night, Hero is shocked to see a monster composed of his own microbots lurking around the city, and at the center of the trouble is another organization member, Young Riku, showing up the combat ship Hero once made for the original Baymax, as Hero relates it's something like a heart, and Dark Riku says it's not quite done yet. Sora wonders how Dark Riku came back on his own, and Dark Riku replies, time travel, though he had to leave his body behind and inhabit a new vessel here. Understanding that to mean replicas, Dark Riku confirms the program has been a success and he is completely real. He then reveals the experiment with this world is to see if a heart can be recreated from data, pointing to Baymax and explaining it has a data heart. Hero demands the chip be returned and Riku leaves, saying he intends to put it back where he found it. Back in Hero's garage, he explains that Baymax with them is the second model, as the original model, along with a combat chip and microbots, were lost to another dimension. He suspects that with the chip back, it means the original Baymax may be back too. The next day, Dark Riku says he finished filling the data heart and turns to the giant pile of dark bug blocks from the datascape. Opening a portal to another dimension, he sends the dark cubes into it, collecting the body of the original Baymax. Inserting the modified combat chip into it, Dark Baymax awakens, and Dark Riku says Sora is going to complete it by destroying it in front of Hero, ordering Dark Baymax to attack him. Hero insists Dark Baymax be stopped, so with Baymax, Sora chases the Dark Original throughout the city, dueling it in the air and succeeding in taking it down. As the Dark Cubes scatter, Hero destroys the Dark Chip within it, but takes the vessel back home and creates a new chip for its heart, allowing two Baymaxes to result. After embarking for their journey again, Sora gets an urgent call from Chip and Dale, saying they've completely lost contact with Mickey and Riku. As much as they need help, only Mickey can open a door to the Realm of Darkness because of Special Keyblade of Darkness. Sora doubles down on his heart being his guiding key as a portal opens up, entering despite being unsure of the destination. Surprised to find himself back home on the Dusty Islands, Sora comes across a keyblade he doesn't recognize, and using it reveals a door that he senses he must enter alone. Inside the Realm of Darkness, Mickey and Riku find themselves still struggling against the Empowered Darkness, where a being of darkness traps Mickey and claims his keyblade, revealing itself to be Aqua, consumed by darkness. She spurns Mickey for arriving so late, leaving her alone in the darkness with no Keyblade, and is eager to pay back the misery and despair in her heart. As Riku struggles to free Mickey from the Demon Tower first, he thinks of Sora, and just then, the door Sora open reveals itself and Sora himself enters the scene just in time. Mobilizing quickly, Sora and Riku form the combined Keyblade again, using its searing light to destroy the Demon Tower and save the King. 
Sora runs interference and adeptly handles Aqua, impressing Riku, and Sora reveals he had some help, showing the Keyblade he found. Dueling her over the darkness, Sora edges out a win, defeating the Keyblade Master and pulling her out of the depths of her own darkness. As everyone is returned to the Destiny Islands, Aqua is overcome with relief at finally returning home to the Realm of Light. At the same time, Vexen meets with Demix in Radiant Garden, attempting to recruit him, and though Demix refuses at first, he hears who is really behind this plan and agrees. Shortly after, Demix delivers a fresh replica for Ienzo from Vexen as well as Ansem the Wise himself. Back with Sora and Aqua, she leads them back to Castle Oblivion where she wields Master Ericus's Keyblade to undo the seal she placed on it. As the Land of Departures is restored to its former glory, Aqua is glad to see Ventus still safe, but also sees his heart never made it back here. Vanitas now enters, casually slipping past Sora and easily fending off Aqua. Aqua seals herself and Vanitas inside a barrier, intending to finally end things and beating him in their duel. However, Vanitas throws a feint and reverses the situation, and in this moment, Sora sees Ventus's heart sleeping within his own and wishes he had the power of waking now. Ventus replies he always had the power, it was just sleeping itself until it was needed. Calling upon it with all his heart, Sora unlocks the power within himself, revealing Ventus's heart and releasing it at long last into its proper body. Bursting with powerful light, Ventus dashes in to save Aqua, deflecting Vanitas' strike and forcing him to retreat for now. Ventus and Sora finally meet in person for the first time, and Ventus is surprised to see how his split darkness form adopted Sora's look, similar to how Sora's split darkness assumed his. Assembling at Yensid's tower, the sorcerer sees the seven guardians of light have finally gathered, congratulating both teams on successful rescues. Mickey mentions they still have not found Terra, and Aqua and Ventus assume responsibility for finding him. She also observes how strong Sora has grown, though he doesn't remember their encounter when he was a little kid, and reminds Mickey how they also met Kairi when she was a little girl too. Lee is struggling on keeping up with how this person and that person all seem to know each other, look like each other, or how to recap it all for Ventus, who does remember Lee and how they were friends. Ventus is also impressed how Lee is now a Keyblade wielder too, that was confused why people call him Axel, proving Lee's point on how it can all seem overly complicated to a newcomer. Fortunately, Jiminy is there to cut the long story down to size with story recaps loaded on their gummy phones. Relaxing as much as they can before the final clash, Riku speaks to the heart of replica Riku he has been harboring inside him, who expresses how disappointed he is and how he spent his fleeting life before. After he fell, he was in the dark abyss for the longest time, waiting to succumb until he found Riku in there as well. He took it as a sign and second chance, preferring to meet an end with the real Riku than inside the abyss. He still wants to end himself, but also has unfinished business first. Not able to see replica Riku, Kairi and Sora watch Riku sit beside himself as Kairi hands Sora a palpu fruit, telling him she wants to be a part of his life no matter what. He accepts, saying he intends to always keep her safe, but she counters, saying she intends to keep him safe too. Defeating the Sentinels of the space base gatekeeping the Keyblade graveyard, Sora's ace piloting sees them through. Assembling on the battlefield, they are greeted by Xehanort, who does not stand on ceremony as Team Darkness opens by raining Heartless, Unverse, and Nobodies from the sky to hopelessly surround and overwhelm the Light Team. Using every weapon at his disposal, Sora clears the thousands of foes in his way as the group moves ahead, only to be stopped by a Xehanort-possessed Terra who tells them their hearts will be torn from their bodies and the Keyblade will be forged. Xehanort Terra then blitzes the group, striking down an unsuspecting Ventus and easily blocks and counters Sora. Lee is taken down in one blow, and as he turns to cut down Kairi, Sora shields her with his body. Donald and Goofy reveal a portion of their true power as the Captain of the Guard dashes in, adeptly deflecting and staggering Dark Terra, giving the Royal Mage the split second he needs to prepare and release a Zeta Flare, atomizing the foe in a concentrated beam. A new flood of Heartless erupts on the ground as Riku tells Sora their allies are fine and no one has lost their hearts yet. Aqua tells Kairi, Goofy, and Mickey to stay behind and look after the others as herself, Riku, and Sora advance. However, the storm of Heartless quickly grows before them into a massive cyclone, to the point where Heartless tendrils lash out and easily swallow nearly the entire group one by one, even pulling Kairi into itself. With only Riku and Sora left, Sora begins to despair at how quickly they were all dismantled before the real final fight even began, stating again his friends were his power, and now he's powerless. Instead of indulging his self-pity, Riku chooses to stay the course and believe in the Sora that doesn't believe in himself. Turning to face the storm that is approaching, Riku makes a last stand against the Flood of Darkness, defying it till the end, as both himself and Sora are entirely engulfed and fulfill the prophecy that darkness would prevail and light would expire. 
Going back to the game Xehanort and Ericus once played, Xehanort declares checkmate against Ericus, claiming darkness has prevailed and light has expired. However, Ericus merely takes another turn, repositioning himself as Xehanort cries foul and replying that a game is no fun if you know where it's going. He reminds Xehanort there is more to light than meets the eye as new pieces appear on his side and he explains that some light comes from the past. Back with Sora, he wakes up in a realm of calm water and limitless sky where he is met by a small creature calling itself Chirithi and explaining this is the final world. She also mentions Sora has visited here more than once on his visits to the Station of Waking where the edges of sleep and death touch. After the body and heart both perish, some persist and arrive here, but something is refusing to let Sora go, keeping him here. Sora asks about his friends, but Chirithi says only Sora is here so his friends are either truly dead or clinging to the world he came from. Determined to go back, Sora learns the only way to do so is to piece his conceptual self back together in this world first. Normally, only hearts come here, but it seems Sora's body was cast here too and so he can pull himself back together. As Sora wanders, he finds other hearts here, including a nameless star that is only lingering here because of her pining for another, whose heart was replaced with someone else's. She knows that if he ever regained his old self, he would look for her, and so she waits here to be found. They chat, and after the star cheers up Sora, he offers to help look for her friend once he's out, asking for his name. The star whispers it to him, and Sora is shocked to recognize the unexpected name, but he agrees to keep it a secret. He is also recognized by another heart belonging to Naminé, who says she found herself here after Kairi was taken by a powerful darkness. She adds she can still feel Kairi's heart and shares that she is fighting hard to prevent Sora from fading away, so he needs to hurry and go to her. Saving Kairi means saving her from this place too, and she adds that while sifting through memories, she spoke to Terra and notes he has a strong will keeping him tethered to the Realm of Light. She says she'll try, tracing that lingering connection and hopefully she can help from here. Finding himself atop a large rotating mass, he recompletes himself and asks Chirithi if she's also waiting for someone too. Chirithi says she is and Sora offers to help find him, but Chirithi pulls back saying he doesn't remember the past and he'll arrive here one day anyway. Declaring them friends now, Sora departs while saying he'll return to visit Chirithi and she appreciates the gesture. Focusing on letting his heart be his guiding key, Sora opens the way out and forward, taking advantage of his time as just a heart to travel back in time to the point where both he and Riku were swallowed by the darkness. This time, navigating towards the light, Sora finds himself in the worlds he just visited and a new heartless collecting the hearts of the Guardians of Light. It attempts to escape as Sora follows it through portals of various worlds and reclaims the hearts of everyone thought lost to the darkness tide, though was concerned he doesn't find Kairi's. Young Xehanort intercepts him, saying the power of waking is for traversing hearts to reach worlds, not for traversing worlds to reach hearts. Sora gets a call that the Keyblade Graveyard is open again and thinks to check there now, and as he travels, he is surprised to find Kairi already there. Sora realizes the light guiding him here was her, and she says all she did was believe he would pull through. Telling her she is his strength, Kairi blushes and takes his hand as Sora thinks back to the other princesses of heart and their expressions of love too. Along with everyone's hearts, the whole team is returned and restored at the Keyblade Graveyard right before they fell earlier, ready to seize their second chance. This time, Dark Terra stands before them like before, though as he begins his attack, it's immediately shut down by Terra's Keyblade armor, animated by his Lingering Will and sent by Naminé. Speaking for itself, Lingering Will is eager to fight Xehanort once again, form changing his Keyblade into a whip in order to disarm Dark Terra quickly and once more into a massive cannon to blow him away and continue to pressure him. As hordes of enemies now converge, the Darkstorm succeeds in building up to its full strength, but this time Sora charges ahead to be the tip of the spear. Leaping in, he is surprised to be caught off guard by bright light and the image of an old Keyblade Master he's never met named Ephemer, offering him some help to even the odds against this Legion foe. Countless Keyblades fly together and encircle the Demon Tide, uniting together as Sora leads them directly into the Eye of the Storm. His hearts connecting to the mysterious Union, the Bastion of Blades beat back the Blight in a relentless barrage. Piercing the core, the Keyblades disperse quickly after the victory as Aqua and Ventus recognize them as Keyblade wielders of the past and appreciate the light of the past still shining and not forgotten. There's no time to rest as dark young Riku rains down even more Heartless on them, though pulling him out of a tough spot is Master Yen Sid, arriving with his magic to slice a safe route forward. He tells the Keyblade Guardians to move on ahead, as he, Donald, and Goofy will be enough to hold the line here and catch up when they're done. Further on, at a familiar crossroads in the Keyblade Graveyard, the Seven Guardians of Light are finally met by the approaching Thirteen Darknesses, and Xehanort announces his eagerness at uncovering the Keyblade War's secrets together, starting with forging the Keyblade. Xehanort begins by raising a massive labyrinth around them all, and everyone splitting up to settle duels with their own rivals. 
Floating quickly between the different arenas, Sora joins Riku in facing off against Heartless Ansem, Dark Young Riku, and Zigbar, though Ansem chooses to move on ahead for now. Beating down Zigbar, the sharpshooter laments how if he had a Keyblade, things would be different, and though Sora jabs he isn't worthy, Zigbar replies with curious confidence that he is worthy. He adds one was already promised to him, as he steps back over the edge and smirks, exiting the stage. Now focusing on Dark Young Riku, he is quickly defeated while claiming to be the real Riku. Riku is confused as he thought this Riku was from when Riku was possessed by Xehanort, but the heart of replica Riku comes out, clarifying this is not the past version of Riku, but the past version of himself, replica Riku. Riku's replica Riku slams into replica Riku's replica, exposing it as such, and expunges his dark past self, as Riku is surprised Riku replica does not seize the replica for himself. The replica responds that there are too many Rikus, and the world already has the true one, and besides, he wants him to finish his mission of saving Namine with this vessel. Riku accepts, and both replicas disappear to rest in peace. Afterwards, Sora goes on ahead to help the others as Riku opts to leave the replica here for now and continue pursuit of Ansem. Though, with convenient timing, Demix arrives to claim the replica body, telling Riku he's on their side for a secret side mission, and leaves promptly. Backing up Mickey, who was fending off Xemnas, Marluxia, Luxord, and Larxene by himself, Xemnas chooses to imbue Luxord with some of his power before taking his leave, and Mickey deflects a card flung at Sora. Luxord activates his trap card, capturing Mickey, as he tells Sora it's time to duel, though Sora's trust in the heart of the cards sees through his schemes. Accepting his loss, Luxord tosses Sora a face down card to use in due time to tip the scales, and Sora thanks him, wishing they can just play a normal game next time. Freeing Mickey, the 2v2 fight continues as Sora strikes down Larxene, telling her she's going to be recompleted after this. She spits some salt back at him, but admits it's better than becoming a Xehanort vessel, and was just here for the ride because of someone else in particular. Speaking of, as Marluxia is struck down soon after, a rush of memories return to him as he laughs sincerely for the first time in a while, remembering how to feel. He thanks Sora for defeating him as recompleted, he can reclaim his identity and real purpose in life. Splitting up, Mickey tells Sora to keep helping the others while he goes after Xemnas, and further on he sees the newer allies engaged in their fights. Choosing to back up Keyblade rookies, Lee and Kairi first, he sees Lee fending off his friend Saix and some person with a Keyblade identical to Sora's. As they fight, Lee holds back against his friend even while berserking, as Xemnas walks in to mock Lee for his time as Axel. He adds what a useless character he is, and Lee shoots back how popular he is regardless, and how many fans are rooting for him. Attempting to strike Xemnas, Axel's Keyblade is caught barehanded with ease as Xemnas shatters it, calling this Keyblade a joke, and he orders the cloaked girl to kill her old friend. Sora saves Lee in time and tells the girl to remain calm as he recognizes her true identity as Xion, and memories come rushing back to her, staggering her. Disappointed in Xion yet again, Xemnas kicks Xion aside, and seeing her face, Lee suddenly recalls her as well. As Xemnas moves to execute her now, a light quickly leaves Sora's heart as a powerful force is called down from the sky and forces Xemnas back. With a dynamic entry, Roxas enters the scene, reuniting with his friends and standing together again at last. Xemnas wonders how he is here, and Roxas replies they use the same plan as the organization, using replicas to store their hearts, and the last thing he needed to be whole was a connection provided by Sora just now. Having the last word, Xemnas quickly warps behind them to steal away Kairi and warp away, as Saix buys him time, though Roxas and Xion say they'll step in and fight in place for Lee and Kairi. Teaming up with his own nobody, an experimental replica, the trio of Keyblade wielders once sharing the same heart overwhelm and defeat Saix, who says he felt jealous when Axel went off and made new friends, leaving himself and the girl they swore to find together behind. Bidding farewell for now, Sora hurries now after Kairi, as Roxas, Xion, and Lee take time to embrace their reunion. Catching up to Aqua and Ventus who face off against Dark Terra and Vanitas, Sora rocks both of their boats, defeating Vanitas and shattering his helmet. He's shocked to see Vanitas' true face is a mirror to his own, and Vanitas explains he was the dark part of Ventus that was forcibly ripped out. Ventus's heart's shared time in Sora is why they both look the same. However, unlike others who are unwillingly split into their darkness halves, he chose to be darkness, and content with that fades away. Now focusing on Terra, they try to help him regain control, but he binds them all with Chains of Darkness. The Guardian Heartless suddenly dashes in, saves them, grabs Dark Terra, and tears the binding over his mouth to repeat Terra's oath that one day he would set this right. Terra's heart shines brightly against his dark form, and seizing the opportunity, Sora uses his Keyblade to release Xehanort's heart from Terra's body, and Terra's heart escapes the darkness of his Heartless. 
As they recombine, original Terra is fully restored, thanking Aqua for saving him and guiding him, and thanking Ventus for never giving up and finding him. Wanting to give the old trio of friends some space and time to rest, Sora goes on ahead as Aqua tells him they'll catch up later. As Sora catches up to Mickey and Riku, they are met by Heartless Ansem, Young Xehanort, and Xemnas. Xehanort steps in, revealing how the light and dark have now clashed nine times, producing these nine keys. He says they need four more that will come shortly, and forces Sora to cooperate in combat with Kairi as leverage. As the team up triumphs against young Xehanort, he chuckles, letting Sora know he's going to go back to his time and live out his life, while ominously warning Sora that he will soon have to pay a big price. Now edging on a win against the Ansem and Xemnas tag team, Ansem recognizes Riku's strength and laments he only wanted to defy his fate, urging them to move on. Meanwhile, Xemnas is disappointed he lost yet again, and Sora confronts him on the fact that he does indeed have a heart and feelings. Xemnas confesses he does, though the first real feeling he has now is lonely emptiness. Sora replies pain is part of being human, and Xemnas observes how strong one must be to endure it. With all but the head of Organization 13 defeated, Xehanort shows off the 12 blades he now has, revealing he has had the 13th one this entire time. Revealing Kingdom Hearts and Kairi, Xehanort says Sora needs some motivation for their clash, quickly striking down Kairi, shattering her heart, and claiming the last light he needs. Outraged, Sora rushes at Xehanort, only to be knocked down while Riku and Mickey fare no better. Declaring the conclusion of the Keyblade War, Xehanort successfully forges the complete Keyblade, now baiting Kingdom Hearts to show its true form and show him the world to come. Seeing darkness envelop the giant heart, Sora is about to give up hope again when Donald and Goofy catch up to encourage him to stay strong. Roxas, Xion, Lee, Ventus, Aqua, and Terra all arrive as well, as the two identical members notice each other, and Mickey hurries to tell them they actually have one hope left. Recalling he can transcend space and time, Xehanort himself is a portal they can trap him with and push him out of this world. Sora insists he be the one to face down Xehanort while everyone here stays back and uses their power to contain Kingdom Hearts. Donald and Goofy join Sora, knowing they can help more than stay here without a Keyblade. Before he leaves, Xion tells Sora Kairi will actually be alright, sensing this through her unique connection to her, and Sora appreciates the relieving news. With their powers combined, Xehanort is pierced by their Keyblade Beams as they unlock a portal from him that Sora, Donald, and Goofy quickly slip into while dragging Xehanort inside. Finding themselves in Scala at Kylum, the group is soon surrounded by multiple fragments of Xehanort's heart as the scale of their battle escalates to engulf the entire city. After he wins, Sora spots the real Xehanort who welcomes them to the former seat of power for all Keyblade wielders and the Nexus from which all worlds spring. The defeated fragments are absorbed into him as he explains that here, he and his other selves can be one, as the Master emanates incredible unified power, equipping new Keyblade armor. Xehanort displays total control of the realm, twisting and turning at per his whims, as Sora, Donald, and Goofy go all out in the air, underwater, and among the ruins of their earth-shaking duel. Succeeding in shattering his armor, the group forces Xehanort back, though he mocks their plan at trying to contain him here, telling Sora he isn't the only one who knows about connections, while ascending and drawing the Keyblade. Outside the portal, the group tries to keep it stable as long as possible, but Xehanort's 12 fragment replicas appear before them and surround the eight Keybladers. Outnumbered but not outplayed, the Warriors of Light team up back to back and are pushed to the limits to clearing out the invaders. Clashing Blades again, Sora deals with Xehanort one last time as a Keyblade Master hops through keyhole portals connected throughout the arena, tries to drain the light from Sora by force, and hurl the concentrated darkness of Kingdom Hearts at Sora itself. Against all this, Sora's heart and the ties that bind are enough to withstand the assault, and countering with a trinity beam of light of his own, Sora and friends push back and finally defeat the dark seeker Xehanort. Collapsing, Xehanort is not sure how he lost, but is sure Sora is too late, as a purge is coming and the world will be returned to whence it came. He recites how the world began in darkness, and from that darkness came light, and from the light came people, the people had hearts, and in those hearts evil stirred, begetting more darkness. The darkness would spread across the world like a plague, devouring the light and leave behind a world of ruin. Before the world would end in failure, he would seek to use the light of Kingdom Hearts to restart things and give the world a second chance. Sora shoots back that it wasn't his choice to make, and Xehanort counters that no one else was making a call, and someone strong needed to stand up and stop the weak from polluting the world with darkness. Sora doesn't deny this, but claims that the leader isn't Xehanort, and destiny isn't something to be controlled. Looking Sora directly in the eyes, Xehanort chuckles, saying Sora reminds him of an old friend. Their talk is interrupted as the rest of the Keyblade Guardians make their way through the portal into this world and rejoin Sora. 
Terra then walks up to Xehanort and with a smirk says he already told him that there's more to light than meets the eye, and Xehanort is shocked to recognize the crafty man behind those words. As it turns out, hiding inside of Terra and helping him fight the darkness this whole time was the heart of Master Ericus. He emerges and demands Xehanort's surrender of the Keyblade, saying things are not too late for the new generation, looking at his old friend with pity and telling him enough is enough. Reflecting back on how Ericus scored a checkmate in their old game, Xehanort accepted the unusual loss and the two laughed together, promising to be there for each other. Knowing what to do now, Xehanort bequeaths the Keyblade to Sora, congratulating him on a job well done, and Sora accepts. Ericus also apologizes to his students, and they all forgive each other, as he then gives a helping hand to Xehanort, both appearing as their younger selves for a moment, as their hearts pass on. Keyblade in hand, Sora channels the energy of everyone around him, and together they reseal Kingdom Hearts and leave this world, but when they arrive, he tells them things are not over for him. Riku suggests they regroup at Yen Sid's to begin searching for Kairi, but Sora says he already knows what to do. In fact, his whole journey began the day he lost her, and honestly, she keeps slipping away every time he does find her. He insists on going alone, and Mickey warns him the power of waking isn't for chasing certain hearts, so if he's planning on doing this, he may not be able to make it back. Undeterred, Sora asks them to believe in him, and with that, he sets off on his own new journey. He makes his way back to the final world where he explains everything to Chirithi, but she replies that even with the power of waking, he cannot just bring someone back. The power is meant to wake sleeping hearts, not restore those that have completely faded from existence, and he's already used it six times just recently, which has greatly altered the course of history, which is a crime against natural law. By committing such a forbidden act, Sora will end up paying an exorbitant price of losing all of his power and vanishing from this world, banished with no means to return. For the sake of Kairi, Sora is willing to pay this price, and understanding, Chirithi explains what to do. First, Sora is to return to the past, to the point where he changed history the first time. Next, he needs to enter and pass through the hearts of the Guardians until he reaches Kairi's heart, and only has time until the point when everyone loses their heart. Catching Ventus's heart first, he connects to Aqua while fighting the darkness in each of their hearts, and finds himself back in his own, though Naminé is there. She shows him Terra's lingering will she was able to connect with, burning red with Terra's strongest thoughts, anger, and all of his sorrow. Opting to aid Terra, Sora connects to him and emerges during the armor's duel with Dark Terra. Sora reveals he is getting around through time travel in the same manner as Xanor, but his meddling causes the armor to be destroyed during the fight. Xehanort observes Sora walking the forbidden path, hoping he can afford the price, as he catches him and casts him into the darkness, yet within this darkness is where Sora finds Terra's heart. From here, he connects back to himself and again when Roxas waked within him, using it to signal Roxas to the battlefield. Unfortunately, he sees searching the past yields no results, and sees one last hope in sending his heart through the Xehanort portal into Scala at Kylum. Within, he is shocked to find fragments of Kyrie and strange pink Heartless containing these fragments. Wondering why they are inside Heartless, Xehanort appears to say it's because he put them there, adding that Sora only found five of her seven fragments. Seeing Sora is here by himself and is traveling as a heart to break the rules, he chuckles and points out to him his window to change anything in the past has already run out, as Sora is quickly returned to his own heart. Thinking of other connections to Kairi he could try, he then remembers Riku, connecting to him and then to Mickey when they were outside defending against the Xehanort replicas, collecting the final fragments he needed. Lighting up various keyholes and connecting an entire network of light, the seven hearts he connected use their light to recomplete Kairi's seven fragments, and with the power of waking, Sora successfully brings back Kairi. Embracing happily, they are not out of danger yet, as darkness forms another armored Xehanort before them. Their vow to protect each other taking form, Sora and Kairi unleash new ascended power with their bonds, joined by their friends to dispel this dark phantom once and for all. After the fight, the two hearts disappear, but Riku says not to worry, as they move to rejoin the current Sora beyond the portal. Sora and Kairi find themselves back in the final world, where Sora tells Chirithi they're going home and wants her to come with them to find her friend instead of waiting. Chirithi accepts, and together they all finally return. As everyone goes their separate ways, celebration ensues for the victory won and memorials made remembering those they lost. As it turns out, Chirithi's lost friend is Ventus, as they are glad to see each other once again. Roxas, Lee, and Xion celebrate their traditional way, with sea salt ice cream atop the Twilight Town clock tower. Though this time, they're joined by Lee's restored friend, Isa, and Roxas' newfound friends, Hainer, Pence, and Olette, as Sora and Kairi enjoy the same and a gummy ship suddenly approaches. Over in Radiant Garden, Anson the Wise, Evan, and Ienzo work on the replica left with them, and Sora releases Naminé's heart within Kairi, using it to finally bring Naminé into the world as her own complete person. 
Everyone meets up together in the Destiny Islands, playing together and having fun, as Sora and Kairi share a quiet moment together. Holding hands, Sora made good on his wish, but tells Kairi everything it cost him. Watching helplessly with tearful eyes, Kairi witnesses Sora disappear from this world right in front of her. Elsewhere, Xehanort's gazing eye Keyblade is picked up by a cloaked figure standing next to a conspicuous black box. Materializing before him are Ira, Envy, Ased, and Gula, four of the foretellers and former students of the Master of Masters. They recognize the man that summoned them to be Lushu, another student alongside them, and he reveals he goes by the name Zigbar these days, and once had to cast his old form away. He tells his fellow Keyblade Masters he has finally finished the role he was assigned to play, as Maleficent and Pete look on from a distance. He notes Ava could not make it here, and comments how she had her own mission to carry out. Ased demands to know what Lushu's role was, and smirking, Zigbar turns to the black box and tells them they're in for a long story. As we look again at the Xehanort and Ericus game, Ericus sets up a new board, hearing of a game with seven dark pieces on one side, and is excited to show Xehanort the rest. Elsewhere, Sora now wakes up in an empty but starlit version of the final world. He calls out to the void and is surprised to not only hear someone reply, but sees it's Yazora from the Verum Rex video game, who is confused how Sora knows that and questions who he really is. Sora is then surprised to hear Yazora somehow knows him and concludes this cannot be the real world, yet remembers how the nameless star in the final world mentioned Yazora too, so maybe he is real. Yazora says he is really here, but this is not the real world, and this is not what he looks like, so he finds it awfully suspicious Sora recognizes him. He doubts who Sora is, but adds if he is, that his path is clear, drawing a weapon. Suddenly, Sora sees his own heart briefly before an entire cityscape materializes around them. Yazora claims he accidentally found himself here and was told to save Sora, yet challenges Sora to a fierce duel and loses, concluding his powers must not be needed yet. As Yazora disappears with a smile, Sora finds himself again in the final world, versus Yazora waking up as if from a dream, thinking he's been having these weird thoughts lately. As the game ends, over in the Land of Departures, Terra has taught Master Riku everything he knows and is proud to see how strong he's become, as he leaves alongside Aqua and Ventus embarking on a mission to find Sora. Riku watches them don their Keyblade armor and depart, but as a year passes, he's in Radiant Garden, talking to Aerith, Leon, and Yuffie about how no progress has been made. Sid has been scouring data for a clue, and Mickey, Donald, and Goofy are searching every world he's ever been in for a lead, too. Terra, Ventus, and Aqua still search in the Realm of Darkness, and the Twilight Town gang is searching Roxas and Shion's memories. Regarding Kairi, who believes her heart holds a clue, she has been asleep for the past year to allow Ants and the Wise and team to search her heart. Sid then directs their attention to the data Sora he constructed with the network data compiled so far. Using it to unlock data of the real Organization 13 and unfortunately offers no new leads, but just then the Fairy Godmother visits them all. She says she was sent by Merlin and Master Yen Sid and asks Riku about the strange dream he's been having, and he relates the one where he's in a strange city looking for Sora, where a mysterious person was watching him from on high. Being an expert on dreams, Fairy Godmother believes Riku's dream holds a lead to Sora, and not just his dream, but Kairi's and a certain nameless star's as they prepare for the next journey. Kingdom Hearts 3 has enjoyed the success of selling over 5 million copies worldwide. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this recap, I hope it helped. If you liked the video, share it with someone who needs the help too. Consider subscribing for more recaps like this, joining the channel membership or Patreon if you're feeling generous, and I'll see you on the next Battlefield.